Welcome to Everyday Cooking with Anne. I'm so excited to share a new recipe with you today on my Mexican thread. We're going to do another segment of the Cafe Rio type salad that we're making. And this is the creamy cilantro dressing. And once again, sometimes it is the dressing on the salad that really makes the salad so special, not just the ingredients in the salad. And tonight we're making this cre uh, creamy cilantro dressing and of course it's made from scratch because that makes it so much better. So let me show you some of the ingredients that we're going to be putting in our dressing to that tonight. We, are, we have a half a cup of sour cream, half a cup of, in fact, let's just start putting them in as I mentioned them as we do into our, into our uh, ninja that we're going to process all of this dressing with. So we've got a half a cup of sour cream. Whoops. And then we have a half a cup of mayonnaise. And we have about a half a cup of sugar. You can put a little bit more, uh, less if you want in there. I'm going to add a little bit later to see if we need more. We also are going to add um, one 16 ounce bottle of uh, salsa verde chicken, uh, thick and chunky. And this is what really makes the dressing wonderful too. So we're going to put a whole bottle of this in. Okay. We are also going to put in two tablespoons of lime juice. Now this salad dressing can go on any like Mexican type salad, but with the Cafe Rio, it's what really makes it. We are also going to put in a half a cup of buttermilk. And here are some of the spices that we're going to put in. I'm putting in about two tablespoons or one package. You can, this is, it comes in a larger container, but you can find a package of this ranch dressing mix. And I'm going to put two tablespoons of that in here too, as well. And for ground cumin, I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of this, a teaspoon of salt, uh, probably about a quarter teaspoon or an eighth a teaspoon of um, cayenne pepper. So I'm just putting a little bit of cayenne in. You don't want to put too much. And I think that's it. And on top of that, uh, we are going to put in three or four fresh garlic or you can put some garlic powder in if you prefer that a half a teaspoon of that but I always like to use fresh garlic if I can and then just a bunch of cilantro fresh cilantro okay we're gonna put this on right now I'm gonna test it a little bit to see if it needs uh, a little bit more sugar in it Actually, that tastes really, really great with not quite so much sugar. Okay, this is the cilantro dressing that we're, creamy cilantro dressing that we're featuring tonight. This will go on your Cafe Rio type salad that we're going to finish up in another segment. Today we're going to be making a Cafe Rio salad. And those of you who live in the western part of the United States might be familiar for, with uh, this restaurant, Cafe Rio. Uh, this is going to be my version of what I do to make this really wonderful roast which turns into basically a pork barbacoa, which layers a salad full of uh, uh, cilantro lime rice, black beans, an amazing dressing, and lots of romaine lettuce. So it's a uh, one dish meal, and everybody loves this. It is so delicious. So I'm excited to share this recipe with you so that you can have this at home and have really great Mexican food no matter where you live in the country if you don't live near uh, Cafe Rio near you. Okay, so these are the ingredients that we're going to do to make this roll. You're going to need your crock pot and my recipe calls for about half the size that we're using but we're going to so we're going to be doubling the recipe on how much we're going to be putting on. This uh, roast is a pork, it is not a pork shoulder, it is a pork butt roast. You can see it has a cap of fat on the top of it here. Um, it happens to be a bone-in roast right here. This is going to make it very tender and really great. And this roast is going to be roasting. This is about almost, not quite, eight pounds. So the recipe I have calls for three or three and a half pounds. So you could half this if you wanted to. We're going to be cooking the whole thing. 
and show you. This is what it looks like when it's outside of the package, and there's a lot of marbling in here. This is a great piece of meat that you cook on low heat, very low heat, and then when we get ready to prepare it, we're going to shred it and add other things. Um, other things that we're going to be putting in this recipe, uh, you want to use either Coca-Cola or Dr. Pepper. Uh, you, this is not, this is uh, has all the sugar. No diet will work. It has to be the the real deal. Okay, without any diet, we are going to use salt and pepper, um, diced green chilies, um, red enchilada sauce, um, garlic salt. I'm adding my famous Mexican seasoning that I make homemade that I've shared in some of the other videos, and I'll be posting that recipe as well, and some brown sugar. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to put this in our, we're going to, first of all, we're going to spray our crock pot to prepare the roast to get it ready with some sand spray so it doesn't stick. Okay, and then we're going to add our roast in here. And we're going to sprinkle it with some salt, about maybe three quarters teaspoon of salt. We want to get it nicely seasoned. And some pepper. Um, about a teaspoon of garlic salt. And I'm also adding at least a teaspoon, and I may be adding late, more of this later on. Just kind of rub that in there a little bit and get it seasoned. Okay. Now, what we're going to do to start the roast is we're going to put um, a cup of this, and we're going to add more of this later when we make uh, make up the rest of the shredded beef, a shredded pork. But we're going to put at least eight ounces of this. I'm waiting for the fizz to come down a bit, and also about well, actually, we're going to add a little bit. Uh, we're going to add more than that because we're doubling it right now. So we're going to add two cups of this now and two cups later. So yeah, we're doubling this. Okay, um, we're going to also add, and you don't want to necessarily cover the roast with this because you don't want your seasonings coming off right now, but you're going to place this all in the bottom of your crock pot. This will flavor the roast for the eight hours. We're going to also add about a half a cup of water as well. All right, now that's all that we're going to be adding at the beginning. We're going to put our crock pot lid on and we're going to let this cook. You can cook on high for about six hours, uh, but you're going to want to have, um, we're going to cook it all day because I'm going to finish this up when I get home from work tonight. So we're going to let this cook on low, eight, eight to nine hours on low. As, so that is a long time. So you can do this like overnight if you want to do this and you want to prepare it the next day for a family gathering. This is a great recipe to feed a crowd because you can do all kinds of things. You can use my homemade tortillas and make a really great Mexican meal for your family. So this is something we use. I've actually served this at many events where I'm feeding 60 people to 100 people and it's always a huge hit. Of course, I always make my homemade salsa and chips to go along with it. So uh, but it's a one dish meal when you put the rice and the beans and everything, the lettuce and all the salad dressing with it. It is just an amazing meal. I hope you enjoy this recipe and let me know what you think. Um, love to hear your comments and please subscribe or share this with your friends if you know that they're going to like Mexican food like this too. And I'll see you later uh, this evening when we're going to finish the whole thing and put the whole uh, Cafe Rio salad together. Okay, here I am nine hours later and I want to show you what the roast looks like, the pork roast that looks like in our crock pot. I'm going to be removing it from the crock pot to um, shred and to remove the fat part that we don't need in our shredded pork. So I'm going to take it out here. It's kind of, actually nine hours was perfect amount of time for this size roast. Tender everywhere. The fat cap is what holds the juices in, however, and makes it really moist and delicious. But most of this pork is a really a very lean meat. 
except for the fat that surrounds it. So once you get the fat rid of the fat, you're going to have some really great meat to serve as a pork roast or as uh, Mexican food. Okay, so we have left in here uh, all the juices that we put in, the Coke and the a uh, little bit of water and the spices we had before, and now we're gonna we're gonna pour this out and let it cool completely in another bowl right here until it's completely cool. We're not gonna be using this for gravy or anything. That will be discarded in a like a Ziploc bag later on. Okay, so we're gonna finish taking this out and put it on our pan. And then what you do is you wanna just start shredding this pork and it's very easy to come apart because it's totally moist, delicious. This is what we're gonna be making now. If you see little pieces of fat like this, you wanna just come put it over here. You want not any fat because it's already very moist and delicious without any fat added to it. But you can see how quickly and easily I can shred this pork because it's perfectly done. You want to make sure that you actually cook it through thoroughly so that it will shred easily like this. So I'm just taking it and shredding it with my fork just a little bit at a time. Now this is going to need some more seasoning, okay, because now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting this in back in the pot with a mixture of spices, green chilies, and some more of the Dr. Pepper or Coke, whichever you prefer to use. So you can see a little bit of fat here. And this is where we had it nicely seasoned on top. And we're shredding that now. Now this makes quite a bit. So depending on uh, the crowd, this was probably close to eight pounds, seven and three quarters pound roast that I bought. And you can see how much it makes. You can take some of this and freeze it and use it for another time. Or if you're doing it for a crowd, of course, this will be plenty once you have all the other ingredients that go inside as well. So you can see it's completely shredded now, pretty much. And we'll be taking this and adding it back to our crock pot in a little bit, in just a few minutes. Okay, I've shredded the pork that you saw me make, and I've already put it back in our crock pot because we're going to make our mixture that we're going to put with this. It's going to meld into the meat and create a wonderful flavor for our pork um, salad. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got my food processor out here. I'm going to go ahead and put in one and a half cups. This is red enchilada sauce. If you were just going to single do this recipe, you would just need a 10 ounce can. But since we're doubling this, I'm going to measure it right into here. This is going to be uh, up to three cups. It will be not quite the whole amount, and I probably could just put the whole amount in, but I'm going to measure it. Put in an extra cup here. That's about right. So three cups of the red enchilada, and it's usually one and a half. Um, you're going to put a whole cup and a half of brown sugar. That's a doubled recipe as well. I'm going to add, okay, this is some, from a large can I had of green chilies. I had it in the freezer. I'm going to have a cup of that. It's going to go into it. Normally it would be a half a cup, something like that. But it's seven, or, seven ounces, but I'm going to put a cup of this in. So well, those are green chilies. Add that in here as well. And then I'm going to put a, this is my wonderful Mexican seasoning that I put in everything, including <laughs> everything that I make Mexican sauce. So I'm going to put a whole tablespoon of this to give it some extra flavor. A whole tablespoon of that. As I was testing the meat afterwards, I decided that I needed a little bit more salt in here for the meat. So I'm going to add about a three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and a little bit of pepper. And the great thing about this is, you know, you can correct the seasonings again when you're finished if you need a little more or something. So now the last thing we're going to add into this mixture is two cups of our Dr. Pepper that we added earlier for it to... Um, to cook in and now we're going to add it to the sauce mixture. This gives it that really Jamaican barbacoa flavor that everybody loves with this recipe. 
So I'm going to add this right now. And it's going to be way to the top. Mmm. Really good. It's perfect. It's not too spicy, so don't worry about that. Okay, so I'm going to take this out right here and add this mixture to our pork. I probably don't need all of it, but I'm going to let it meld into the pork. I'm going to put this back in my crock pot on low for a couple more hours. And then while we're doing that, I'm going to show you how to make the rice that's going to go in this uh, mixture and the rest of the salad that's going to go on top as well. So put this in while this is on low cooking for another couple of hours. You need to plan all of those hours to do this, so you might want to do it ahead of time, which is what I always do. So it's back in the crock pot, and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, part of our Cafe Rio salad includes lime rice. So let me show you how to make this and what kind of rice I use. You can use any long grain rice, but my favorite rice, and you can see it by it by the bag, is basmati uh, extra long grain rice. It's so delicious. Every time I've made this for anybody, they go, what do you do to this rice? And they don't know that it's basmati rice. And I always try to add different flavors and things in there to make it special so it's not just a rice side dish. Okay, so what we're doing is making lime rice. I've already chopped up a little bit of cilantro. In the recipe, it calls like for two tablespoons, but I always put more. So this is a lot of cilantro that we're going to add into the rice. It really gives it that Mexican flavor. I've gone ahead and zested um, two limes. And you can use regular lime, lime juice from the store, but you really actually do need the zest. And so I zest it the best I could for these limes. And then I just use a little reamer like this and go ahead and juice my limes like this and put it in a little dish here. Get as much juice out as you can. So this will be all ready to go too. So we've got the juice of two limes and we've got the zest that goes with that in the cilantro that'll go in the rice dish. Okay, over here, I've gone ahead and melted two cups of, I mean, uh, two tablespoons of butter. And I'm going to go ahead and add my rice in here. This is one and a quarter cups rice, okay? We're going to be adding a little bit more than two cups of chicken broth. This can almost went to the top here. And so I added another quarter cup because it's two and a quarter cups of liquid that will go in with this. But right now, let's put this in here. And we want to use this butter. If you need to add a little bit more, you can. Let's just see how this works out. We're going to put it on about medium, medium high heat. And this is going to turn kind of a nutty brown as soon as it kind of heats up a little bit. But this flavors the rice so well. Now, the recipe says that this will... Uh, make about four cups of rice all together with all of the ingredients. So we'll see if that works out. I've made this rice many times for large crowds who like this recipe. So we're just doing one recipe for this right now to see how much it makes. Okay, we'll be back in just a minute for the other sauteing this rice for about two minutes. So you can see it's kind of turned a nutty brown. Um, I'm going to be adding the chicken broth. So that gets ready to boil. I'm going to be adding about a teaspoon of salt, a little bit of pepper, and I'm going to put about a teaspoon of not quite a teaspoon of cilantro. Cumin, excuse me, that is cumin, not cilantro. I'm adding cilantro too, but I've got this coming up to a boil right now. I'm gonna be adding also the lime juice and cilantro. I'm keeping a little bit out to garnish a little bit later. And of course the lime zest as well. You can see this is going to be very special rice. And if you want to keep your ingredients so you can have it for a while, you might want to double this recipe just to have rice available to put in your a salad or for leftovers as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put my lid on there and let that cook for 20 minutes. 
Okay, this is another part of the Cafe Rio salad and it's one of my favorite parts because it's something you crunch on the top. If you know me already, I like to have lots of different textures in my salads, lots of different things to make it interesting. It's not a plain old salad. Okay, so this I'm using just some regular corn tortillas. I use white corn, to, white corn, but if your favorite is yellow corn, you can use that as well. And I just take it right here and I, I sliced each one of these into little strips that I'm going to deep fat fry. I just use regular vegetable oil and I'm going to put just a few in here. If I've had this on hot and now I've turned it down just a little bit so it's not going to be too hot. This is my this is my grease pan that I use because it's nice and deep so it doesn't spatter out at you. If you have a deep fat fryer that you want to use you can but I like to just keep my uh, this have the oil low in the pan so it doesn't splatter anybody, doesn't hurt anybody. And I just use this little pan because I don't usually need to make too many of these at a time. So I'm waiting for these to kind of brown a little bit. You can see it's bubbling the whole time. And I keep moving them around so that they be, become evenly fried. Okay, and it's not taking very long. And now I'm going to take them out right now. This is about how you want them to look. Okay, now these are the strips that we're going to put on top of the salad. We're going to crunch on top. The next thing you're going to do is, right as soon as you take them out, just like I do with my tortilla chips, you want to sprinkle some salt on them so they'll stick to it. So here's our second batch we're going to do. Okay, we'll see you back when we put the whole salad together. Now we are going to put our uh, Cafe Rio type salad together in, in the dish that I'm going to show you. This is just a little 9 inch aluminum plate pan, but you really want to get a 9 inch cake pan. It's a little bit deeper, so you can fit a lot more food in it. But I'm going to show you how we do this. These are my homemade fresh or tortillas that I made. And they look authentic and fresh because I did make them myself and roll them out myself. I've taught you how to do that in another video, which will link to this um, video as well. So here's our homemade tortilla. Here we have our our... Cafe Rio pork enchilada sauce. It's so delicious. It's nice and hot and bubbly and very tender. You're going to put this in the middle of here to make our salad. So that's going to be the bottom. Then we're going to put our cilantro lime rice on it. And you may want to make more or less than what I'm showing you, depending on how much you like the rice. And then we've got some black greens to decorate it a little bit and give it a little more texture. Then we're going to put on our just regular just cheddar cheese, cheddar and Monterey Jack or uh, Cotillo cheese on there. And then we're going to top the salad with just a lot of romaine lettuce. And you can pile this on as high as you want, depending on how much you like lettuce as compared to all the other toppings. I personally like a lot on here. And then we're going to put our, our uh, homemade French uh, lime, cilantro lime dressing on it. And just however much you like. You could actually put some salsa on here if you want. I have some of my salsa I should have put out here for you. And then to top it off, just to make it have, give it a little bit more texture and just authenticity, we are just going to crunch some of the... Um, strips of tortillas that we fried up and I just I just take it like this and just put it right on top like this crunch it up so it's smaller so you can eat and there you go you can just eat this salad take little strips of this to eat with it and it's so delicious enjoy making this salad and serving it to everyone else and I hope that you will subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I have lots of other salads that I'm teaching as well as lots of desserts and breads and I do have a cookbook that has many of these recipes. This recipe with all the different ingredients and all the different uh, parts of this um, Cafe Rio salad will be posted in the show me more below this video so that you'll have all the recipes ready to go to get you started if you want to make this for your family or a crowd. Enjoy!